Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to our next edition of the Skyduck Skycast. Uh, it's my pleasure and honor to uh, uh, introduce you to Lieutenant Colonel Chris Peterson, who is with the South Carolina, um, South Carolina Wing of the Civil Air Patrol. Uh, he's going to uh, talk to us here in a minute about what CAP is and uh, their mission and their purpose and how they're benefiting the citizens of uh, South Carolina. So, Chris, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure. Okay, so, um, you know, in getting ready for this, uh, this SkyCast, I did a little bit of homework, um, and I, I, I looked into the history of, of CAP, and it's got a rich history. Uh, do you mind just uh, quickly kind of bringing us up to speed about, uh, about what uh, CAP is, who they are, and how they were founded? Sure, it's a, it's a pretty remarkable history. So before World War II started, a group of airmen throughout the country really were, were spotting um, German U-boats off the Atlantic. And they're like, hey, we, we need to develop a network, an organization where we can report this back and get uh, Navy or Coast Guard assets to investigate. Uh, eventually, on December 1st, 1941, uh, Civil Air Patrol was initially chartered and um, we became an asset for the War Department, and that was our first primary mission, was to fly off the coast, coastal patrols, and report back to the Navy or the Coast Guard for uh, any type of U-boat uh, activity. There was such a delay in the report and getting assets out there to investigate that eventually, in 1942, the uh, Civil Air Patrol was allowed to start to carry bombs. We were assigned Army uh, maintenance uh, munitions personnel. They were... Uh, putting bombs on small light aircraft we were going out if we saw a German U-boat uh, we were dropping the bombs spotted reported dropped bombs on hundreds uh, the old wife's tale was that we had credit for sinking too although nobody can really justify that with documentation but we were a big part of the reason the U-boats pulled off of the uh, Atlantic coast of the United States um, we did other missions as well we pulled targets uh, target banners behind the airplane for aerial gunners to practice shooting we did uh, force fire spotting, uh, a lot of the same missions we do today uh, with our emergency services. We also were doing aerospace education in the early 1940s, providing uh, aviation uh, opportunities and training to uh, the general population and the members. Uh, we really were doing STEM before STEM was STEM. Um, and then in 1942, we also developed our cadet program, which... Uh, continues today. Uh, it's something that I served in in the, in the 90s and, and really grew me into a, a leader that I, I feel I am today. Uh, and that's the Civil Air Patrol's uh, goal for cadet programs is to develop leaders. Those three missions are still active today, emergency services, aerospace education, and cadet programs. Okay, interesting. So those are the three missions. We're going to unpack one of those in particular here in, uh, in a few moments about natural yep. disasters and your role with that. Um, but again, in preparation for this interview, I, I looked into the organization of CAP and how they're structured, and it seems a little bit um, uh, complicated, a little bit, because you, you read into <laughs> it, and I, I read that CAP, or Civil Air Patrol, is an auxiliary of the Air Force. That's but correct. Then themselves are 501c3, but and not necessarily military. So do you mind maybe unpacking a little bit about uh, the organizational structure? Sure. Uh, we're all servants uh, who, who serve the Civil Air Patrol or volunteers. Um, we do have kind of two uh, pillars of the organization. We have our military affiliation as an auxiliary of the Air Force, and we have our 501c3 or corporate affiliation. Um, under the uh, Air Force affiliation, we, we were chartered as an auxiliary of the Air Force in uh, 1947. Um, and um, we continue to hold that title today. We are recognized as a total force partner with the active duty reserve and guard components of, this, of the uh, Air Force services. Uh, we fall under, from an operational standpoint, we fall under the first Air Force, Air Force North. Um, any given day, if you walk into their ops uh, room in uh, Florida, you'll see that Civil Air Patrol sorties are occupying the majority or a lot of the uh, daily sorties that the Air Force North has. Uh, providing border patrol, disaster search and rescue assistance, as well as uh, homeland security missions. Um, Funding-wise, since we were chartered by Congress as a 501c3, we do get a stipend or grant from the federal budget under the Air Force every year, and that supports our, our main headquarters building at Maxwell Air Force Base that just kind of keeps everything running and operating and, and everybody uh, working through the corporate or the Air Force structure. Um, as well as it's an opportunity to replace our assets, communications gear, vans, and airplanes. 
Yeah, and speaking of assets, um, you guys are the largest owners of Cessna aircraft and commercial drones, is that right? That's correct. So we have uh, over 560 Cessna aircraft, primarily 172, 182s, but we also have some 206s, uh, so a high-performance six-seat airplane. Uh, and we have Gypsum air vans for some special mission packages that we, we flew long ago. Now they're just nice, large cargo and, and uh, search and rescue aircraft. Uh, and we have a ton of drones. I, I don't know if I could quote you the number of drones because I believe it grows daily. Very interesting. Okay, well, let's take a quick break here, and we're going to hear from the sponsor of this SkyCast. Skyduct has the opportunity to serve through its public sector member agencies. But it's only through the support of partners and sponsors that we have the means to serve. So on behalf of Skyduck members, on behalf of the Skyduck board, we are excited to welcome our newest founding industry partner, Bentley Systems. It is through these relationships and the support that we receive that makes it possible for Skyduck to successfully complete its mission of serving the state of South Carolina through UAS technology. With us today, we have Dan Koval of Bentley Systems. Dan, would you mind saying a few things about Bentley Systems? Thank you, Uba. As, as mentioned, my name is Dan Koval. I am the Corporate Initiatives Manager for Bentley Systems. So first off, Bentley is a leading global provider of engineering software. We help engineers around the world to design, build, construct, analyze, and maintain the sustainability of all things infrastructure. And with that, one of our key pieces of software is Context Capture, which is used by drone and mapping engineers all around the world. And it's my pleasure, I manage all of our corporate giving and community outreach to partner and work with Skyduck to be able to make better access to our software and for them to have better results in the field. Thanks, Dan, for sharing what it is that um, Bentley Systems does. And then also, most of all, thank you for supporting Skyduck in its mission. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Um, so, Chris, if you could, uh, we talked a little bit about this with the three missions, uh, three primary missions that, that CAP has. But can you maybe uh, unpack a little bit and maybe be specific in South Carolina? When a natural disaster happens, whether it be hurricanes or tornadoes or flooding, whatever it happens to be, um, what is CAP's role? What do, you, what do the CAP volunteers specifically do, and under whose authority do they do it? Yeah, so again, we, we, we report to a lot of organizations. We're not a state-owned organization, but we do support the state. So our, our first response is typically to the state, um, and that's uh, the state of South Carolina. We have a memorandum of agreement um, that constitutes and dictates what our roles and missions are in natural disasters or search and rescue. Um, so day zero of an event, so basically when the event is happening, um, we're doing our planning. So we're getting everything prepared. We're finding out what resources we have. We're all volunteers. Some people are out of town. Some people have job duties they can't get out of. A lot of us save our paid time off to be able to use for Civil Air Patrol. Day one of an event is really a hasty focus on search and rescue, what life-saving uh, requirements are needed. So we'll fly into the areas that are hit the most. We'll look for cars that are washed off the road, damage to buildings that are probably occupied. Um, and then we'll start growing into what infrastructure do we need to report back. Uh, usually after the first day is done, we start getting assigned taskings from the state. Um, and then sometime around day one through day three or four, that assignment still comes from the state, but it's really uh, manipulated or approved by FEMA uh, as they start moving in and taking over on larger disasters. So day two and after, we start looking at more damage response. Where are we going to put uh, dump trucks, bulldozers? You know, are we able to get uh, food and supplies to different places? Are the roads washing out? Uh, was there no immediate damage to a road on day one, but maybe there is on day three because a dam is potentially going to rupture? I mean, we can go and assess probably 15 or 20 dams within an hour from the air and from the ground. That would take all day. So with a couple airplanes, we can assess a large number of dams. 
Um, we are a federal asset, so when we respond, even in the state of South Carolina, many times we're pulling in resources from North Carolina, Georgia, throughout uh, throughout the, the different bordering uh, states. Um, South Carolina responded to Florida for multiple hurricanes. We've also responded to the Gulf Coast for Katrina, for Rita, um, for the uh, Gulf Water Horizon incident that happened. Um, so Civil Patrol, again, is a federal response arm, and, um, and we respond with a lot of assets. 550 airplanes, 560 airplanes is a lot. Um, UAVs start getting involved probably after day one. Um, start looking at the damage assessment, and, and that mission continues to grow and change, and it's very dynamic. Okay, great, Chris. Thank yes, you. Sir. So, um, you know, and you mentioned this before, CAP is primarily a voluntary uh, volunteer organization. There are some staff members um, uh, at the leadership level, and there's some administrative staff, of course, right. but largely the majority of, of CAP is made up by volunteers. So when you're talking about all these missions and things that CAP is doing, can you maybe talk through a little about what the day or the week in the life of a CAP member is? Because again, most of them, like yourself, they have other jobs that they're doing, and this is a, as an addition to that as a volunteer. So can you unpack that a little Again, bit? so weekly at our local unit level, which is typically in a town or a community, um, we have uh, 18 units within the state of South Carolina. Um, so typically, a member will go to their local unit, and during their meeting night, they're looking at training and support to the three missions. So again, emergency services, aerospace education, and cadet programs. So they may not be directly affecting those, but the safety officer is providing guidance to all three of those missions. Um, and so that's that's our, our daily squadron type um, local opportunities that we do weekly. When an event happens or when a training event happens, we move to a statewide response. The units provide the resources. And um, again, we take what resources are available. It's, uh, it's not like the military where we can order or deploy a whole unit to go cover something. So each unit is deploying or, or providing what assets they can. And we at the state level are now trying to manipulate and, and piece together the crews we need for a, a specific task. Um, and it's tough. I mean, people have uh, have work, they have family, they have lives that uh, that keep them from CAP. But we have about 900 members in the state of South Carolina between the adults and the cadets. And uh, typically, for a response, we get between 60 and 100 members, and that's uh, that's capable for us to uh, to provide the needed response. And when we start wearing out or start running thin on resources, we start asking our neighboring states. Again, for the past five years, the response in South Carolina, we've had people all the way up through. Delaware, Ohio, Tennessee, Georgia. Um, I mean, we're a big family, so we're going to support each other as as, uh, as much as necessary. Now you alluded to this, I think, with some of that responses. Mm -hmm. But uh, for those uh, of our members who, again, we reside in South Carolina, uh, Sky uh, Skyduck itself is a voluntary organization, so it's it's full of volunteers that are supporting its effort. For for our members who have a heart for service and are are interested in the Civil Air Patrol. Um, can you maybe speak to a little bit about what the rewards are for joining CAP? Because, again, it's a significant investment in their time and resources, but what the rewards are for CAP and what the commitment expectation is from CAP. Sure. So everybody gets their paycheck, as we call it, and that's the, the reward you get from, from your service. So, I mean, there's some great training. Um, I've, I've had a lots of opportunities in my three decades of service to, to do some great training um, both aviation, I'm currently in a, a very difficult uh, leadership school based out of our national headquarters, and it's very similar to an air war college type curriculum uh, that we're going through to develop uh, the future senior leaders of CAP. I, my personal paycheck is being able to mentor and um, work with the young people. So I've had opportunities through my life from, from I've just been blessed. Um, not everybody is so lucky and I was lucky because I had mentors and I had had parents who were able to to push and guide me. Um, I've been able to do that for for quite a few of our cadets, and really that's the biggest reward is seeing them succeed in what they want to do. Um, I, I think the ultimate pinnacle of my career in CAP is one of my my mentees invited me to uh, Lachlan Air Force Base to pin his Air Force wings on when he uh, graduated from Air Force pilot training. I mean, it still puts put chills up and down me to think about that, you know, of all the people in his life that he could have asked to do this, mom, dad, cousin, next door neighbor, it, it was me. And um, that, that just was very significant and a pinnacle 
of uh, the paycheck that I've received. That's really cool. Yes, sir. Well, uh, listen, so we'll go ahead and wrap things up here. But uh, as we close, for those uh, of our members who may be interested in more information about CAP, I'm going to put the South Carolina Wing website uh, on our screen here, as well as, Chris, if you're okay, I'll put your, your email address sure. here on our screen as well uh, for our members to contact you uh, directly for more information and uh, potentially for ways in which they can get involved with CAP. Absolutely. Uh, small UAVs is a, is a growing capability that, that we're still cultivating and learning what we're able to and not do, so we, we could use the help. Okay. Well, great, Chris. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you, uh, you giving that to us, and uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks. Me too. Thanks, Jim.